Verse 1, this is the closing of this letter to the Romans. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea, to which this is one of the proof verses that they give for Paul writing from Corinth to the Romans. Remember, he's never been to Rome before. And Sincrea is just right down here, just right across from its neighboring. It's a port, little port city, uh, neighboring Corinth. Verse 2, and so he's telling them about Phoebe and whom they believe that this letter was actually sent by with Phoebe. That you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succor of many, and of myself also a helper. Greet Priscilla and Achilla, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks. Unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Now, as we go over some of these names, any that we may recognize from different parts of, let's say, the book of Acts, we can give a little bit of their background. Achilla was a Jew of Pontus, whom St. Paul had found with his wife at Corinth, Acts 18.1. They had there been converted by him and afterwards appear in his company at Ephesus. At the time when this epistle was written, they were at Rome, but later they seemed to have returned to Ephesus, 2 Timothy 4. Verse 5, Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epanetus, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Meaning that he was one of the very first saved in that general vicinity. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobulus' household. Salute Herodian, my kinsman. Greet them that are of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Tryphena and Tryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Now we're about to get more into teaching. There's just a few more names. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritos. Phlegon, Hermas, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philologus and Julia, Nerus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. Now there is something real quick to comment about this Nerus that I liked in Guzik's notes. In AD 95, two distinguished Romans were condemned for being Christians. The husband was executed and the wife was banished. The name of their chief servant was Nerus. This may be the same Nerus mentioned here, and he may be the one who brought the gospel to them. Now, of course, if you haven't already noticed, this entire closing part of this letter is just filled with names. Of the 24 names here, 13 also appear in inscriptions or documents connected with the emperor's palace in Rome. We know that there were Christians among Caesar's household, Philippians 4.22, Paul may be writing many of the servants who worked for Caesar, namely Nero, one of the most evil men that's ever lived, who became Christians. And, I mean, just look, the gospel was even presented unto Nero himself. Not, not just by Paul, but his own servants knew about Christ. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And avoid them. For they that are of such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, meaning their own lust, the worldly things. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple, no doubt to get money from them. As Satan insinuated into Eve by pretending he wished her good. So these seducers pretend they aim at nothing but the good and benefit of those with whom they have to do. With smooth and flattering words they praise both the persons and doings of those whom they would ensnare. Verse 19, For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Man, and what a day that's going to be. No more worrying about him, because it's not just Satan that's crushed under the feet. It's all his dominion all his all evil will be annihilated one day and we have no idea you talk about paradise 
we've never for one moment truly known that in its most utmost perfection being on this planet growing up on it and everything we will one day timotheus my work fellow timothy and lucius and jason and sosipater my kinsmen salute you i tertius who wrote this epistle salute you in the lord now this is the man in whom paul was speaking to and he was the one actually writing it with his own hand but now Paul's words continue. Guys, mine host and of the whole church saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you. And Quartus, a brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now for the close, verse 25. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. To which Paul is alluding to these doctrines, which he here calls his gospel or good news, not in contradistinction to the good news of the other apostles, as Locke fancies, to the great discredit of the rest, whose doctrine was the same with Paul's so far as it went, but in opposition to the doctrines taught by the Judaizers and other false teachers. Verse 26, But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith, to which the obedience to the faith there is pointing towards the submission to the righteousness of God. To God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Now for just closing notes on the book of Romans. That wisdom, to God only wise, that wisdom was evinced in devising the plan and adapting it to the renewing of the heart, the justification of the sinner, his preservation, guidance, and sanctification, and in the manner in which the divine attributes had all been seen to harmonize. All this the apostle had illustrated in the previous parts of this epistle to the Romans, and now, full of the convictions of this wisdom, he desires that all the praise and honor should be to God. The tendency of the plan is to promote his glory. The obligation on all who are benefited by it is to give him praise. So with all that said, I repeat once again, to God only wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever.